Right, Sir Richard Branson says that he wouldn't be where he is today if he hadn't been born dyslexic. He's called it his, his superpower. Now, the founder of Virgin Group has spoken <clears throat> about having dyslexia, which affects reading and spelling and all sorts of things, on a new podcast, and says businesses need more people with it as they think and act more creatively. Uh, Sir Richard joins us now from Mallorca, and we also have Kate Griggs here in the studio, who's the founder of charity Made by Dyslexia. Uh, Sir Richard, I want to talk to you very much about dyslexia. I have a dyslexic son who wants to be a pilot, funnily enough. I don't know whether that'll be possible, but I always quote you as someone who's gone quite far in all sorts of ways with dyslexia. But we, we can't really talk to you, unfortunately, on this morning without just kicking off and touching on the thousands of people who are stranded because of this problem with air traffic control and what appears to be one rogue flight plan misfiled. Now, you as a person who's presided over so many flights and your airline for so long, um, tell us about the frustration from your side of the fence when you're having to deal with people stranded and miserable in this way and who you blame, really. Um, well, when something like this goes wrong, it's horrible. Um, for, for I mean, I've, I've, sat, I've sat at airports for hours myself and um, know exactly what it's like. Um, we fortunately at Virgin Atlantic have got um, an extraordinary team of people, and I don't think they've had any flights that um, they haven't managed to um, you know, get, 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 get off on time and get back on time. So um, I think maybe we're lucky that we're long haul, not short haul. Um, and they've managed. They've managed to overcome overcome it, overcome the problems. But um, but for the, for those who um, are stuck at airports, there's not. There's, there's well, there, there's almost nothing worse. And just, airlines just... generally are saying, um, well, it's not our problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not the people that have caused this. We're not part of this system. Nat, uh, we 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 are as much victims of it. And do you think that's something that's quite tough on the airlines? Because people, of course, people are going to be asking for compensation, aren't they? Yes, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure that airlines that have been affected um, are going to, I don't know, they'll almost definitely just have to pay compensation um, and, and take it on the chin. Um, but, um, but these things happen and, and, and hopefully... Um, Naps can learn from this and make sure they don't make the same mistake again. Well, just one more question before we... We, we do want to talk to you about, about dyslexia. It's so interesting, uh, and the, the force it's been in your life. Um, but are you as astonished as the rest of us? As, I mean, you're a problem solver, you're a businessman. Are you as astonished as, as the rest of the world looking at this situation this morning that a whole system could crash like this because of what appears to be one rogue flight plan filed and that it should basically crash and crash and crash and crash and some people not get home for two weeks. I mean, it just seems completely bonkers. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah, and funnily enough, of course, um, problem-solving and getting round things is one of the things that you believe um, dyslexia has given you, don't you? And I think it's a fascinating take on dyslexia that you present um, because you say that it's not just something you can get over and do as well as you've done in your life, but it's actually an advantage. Just, just talk, us about, talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, well, schooling, current schooling, is all about um, learning facts. Um, and facts you can now get through AI or you can get on the internet. So an awful lot about schooling is uh, is sort of unnecessary and what, what schooling I suspect should be like and uh, um, is uh, and that reflects what dyslexics are like is uh, more creative and um, and bring it bring out the creative side of um, cre the creative side of individuals and I mean dyslexic people do think slightly differently than their their brothers and sisters and um, and because um, they struggle at school at the, the conventional, um, the conventional schooling. Um, they often exceed at other things, um, and they and they set out in life to try to um, prove themselves um, because they found it difficult at school. And um, and there are just so many people who were, were dyslexic who've gone on to do 
um, do good things. I mean, Kate, Kate is interviewing a lot of those people so that dyslexia can actually um, you know, learn from them and, you know, and, and be inspired and have some hope for the future. And, um, and I think that, you know, having that, having that belief in yourself, it's not just it's dyslexic people, by the way, this week that need to listen to this. It's all, all those people who didn't do well at the boring conventional schoolwork um, uh, who can go on and do really well um, outside school because um, you know you can find other people to help you at the things you're not you're not not great at. You can become a great delegator. You can become a great great leader of people. Um, you, you 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 don't need in this day and age um, the sort of facts and facts and figures that um, mm. you learn at school. I mean, obviously some jobs you do, but but, but by and large you don't. You said that when you were at school, uh, which you left, of course, when you were 16, uh, you were treated as stupid, basically, and, and thick by teachers. Um, did you have self-doubt yourself in those years? Did you wonder if, in fact, you were, in, in mm. some way, educationally subnormal? Or did you, did you know all along that there was something you couldn't do but that you'd get round it? Um, I knew I would sit at the back of the class. I'd, I had... Um, no interest in the mumbo jumbo that was going on on the blackboard, um, algebra and geometry and um, and, um, uh, and Latin and uh, the like, and, um, and and I just sat at the back planning a magazine to try to you know to change the world, to to try to campaign against the Vietnamese War. I mean things that I was interested in, try to try to, uh, to change the education system and and try and try to. Um, you know, uh, have students around the world get together to try to try to make it better. Now, um, I left, and, and then bizarrely, for a dyslexic, ran the magazine. That became my education. I got other people to help me with the writing, um, but I did the interviews, and um, and and you know that's what kick, kick started Virgin. Um, but it was a, 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 so much of a better education than conventional education. So there will be people that will be feeling pretty lost, confused and nervous that haven't got results at school that they wanted right now in GCSEs and A-levels and standards and hires. Uh, what would you say to them? Because there's no doubt that, that not having the grades you want can prevent you from, from the plan you had. Yep. You know, there's no way around that at the moment, is there? Not everybody can be Sir Richard Brown. So what would be your best advice to them? And um, what, what, what people are looking for yes. is personality, um, uh, is, is people that um, have, got, have, got, have got good ideas. Um, uh, um, but, and, you know, what we, and, and more and more companies, I think, are now not asking people for their exam results. They're, um, they're taking people on based on their interview. Mm -hmm. um, and... And, and I think that's what companies should do because exam results just tell you one aspect of, of, um, of what, what somebody may be good at. They don't give you the overall picture of, of, of an individual. And, um, and so, um, you know, so, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you've got a good personality and you, 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 you'll, you'll go far, if not, you can, you can work on that. And, <laughs> um, and, uh, and um, but, but just, Throw yourself into life. It doesn't matter whether you, you, you know, whether, honestly, it doesn't matter. I know it's easy for me to say whether you make a lot of money, whether you don't make a lot of money. Um, you know, uh, we, we, in, in the end, um, you know, life matters is your, your group of friends, your family, um, your, the, your, the people around you, um, ideally, obviously, to get a roof over your head and, and you know, be able to afford the basics but from from that you can add, if you if you're lucky you can add on the holidays and the other things but well, we know we know um, richard we know sir richard you throw an awful amount of support to this fantastic charity i love the name kate of your charity it's a great name made by dyslexia i mean that really is giving the finger to dyslexia isn't it saying yeah you know what actually you you've made me yeah, and our whole team is made by dyslexia, so we're the voice... You're all dyslexic. We're all dyslexic. We're yeah. the voice of dyslexic people. And what's really, really important is that we look at the upside of dyslexia because we have naturally all the soft skills, as Richard says, that every single workplace is looking for. So keeping an eye on that and a focus on that is really important. 
And I think the podcast series we've just launched, Lessons mm. in Dyslexic Thinking, features... What's it called again? Lessons in Dyslexic? Lessons in Dyslexic Thinking. Mm. Richard is our first guest. The second guest is the Mayor of New York, who accredits his dyslexic thinking to being successful. Mm. And he's actually trained every single teacher in New York City using the free training that we produce. Typically, so. when do people realise they're dyslexic? I think kids know very young because they can't do what the other kids can do. Um, so you can tell if you're dyslexic from age about five, but it's not being picked up in schools, it's not routinely screened for. Um, mm. And what we need to do is make sure that we're actually actively looking for dyslexic, dyslexia and dyslexic kids because they have exactly the soft skills that the World Economic Forum says the future needs. So can you sum up, I mean, there's, it, there, there isn't just one dyslexic, is it? It comes in many forms, but what is the, the skill or the thinking of a dyslexic person that wouldn't be as present in mm. somebody who isn't. So it's creative thinking, imagination, problem solving, spotting connections. GCHQ, the intelligence agency we work with, they actively recruit dyslexic people as spies look be for them. because of the way they think. Code <laughs> crackers. Um, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's all of the um, out-of-the-box thinking, thinking um, non-sequential thinking. Everything mm. that we don't test in schools mm -hmm. is mm. what dyslexics are good at. And that's what, as artificial intelligence is taking over so many jobs, it's the dyslexic thinking that is going to be so vital. One last very quick, slightly trivial question, but it interests me as someone who's interested in books. Does it, if you're dyslexic throughout life, does it mean that you'll never be able to sit down and enjoy a good read, a good book? No, I love books. Really? Um, my sons love books. But do you take, but you, it takes you longer to read them? Um, a little bit longer, probably, but I think the, the key for dyslexic people is to get help early for the things that we struggle with, and that's very easy to, to get if you've got teachers trained, which is why, as a charity, we're providing free training for mm. teachers. But it's, it's get support early to do those mm. things and really focus on your strengths because they are phenomenal and they... 40% oh. of, of, of entrepreneurs are dyslexic. So. Well, you do a good, a good sales pitch for them. And <laughs> you've got no better advert than Sir Richard Branson Absolutely. for someone who's made it through dyslexia. Very good Thank to you, talk Richard. to you this morning.